No, I'm, saying, I'm just telling y'all the truth. See, well, he, he let them talk. Yeah, because I knew what they were saying. I knew that they weren't going to cause harm to the body. My assignment as the pastor is to watch over the flock. Somebody get up here. Hold up a second. Somebody get up here. Well, I, I want to share my testimony. You know, last night I seen five black cats <laughs> with two brown cows. And uh, the Lord said that I'm going to get some money. I'm like, no, you lying. That ain't in the Bible. That ain't in the Bible. I've, I, I've seen that happen in church. And now they got baby Christians inside the church who don't know no better. They start looking for black cats and brown cows. <laughs> what they at? If he got me, look, if he got paid. But when it talks about taking it to the church, he's talking about taking it to the spiritual authority that you set under. Okay. First, uh, uh, First Corinthians chapter six. First Corinthians chapter six. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Look at verse number one. First Corinthians chapter six. Mm, I'm not gonna be able to finish this. Amen. First Corinthians chapter six. Look at verse number one. First Corinthians chapter six, verse number one. Look what he says. Dare any of you, having a matter against another, go to the law before the unjust and not before the saints? Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matter? Look what he says. Why in the world... Are you going to take your brother to court over an offense when we, the body of Christ, will judge the whole world? We're going to sit in judgment of the whole world. And he says, you mean to tell me that there's nobody in church that can handle that matter? That there's nobody mature in the church. That can handle that? In other words, he's saying, if there is nobody in the church that can handle that, we, we need to grow up. Amen. Amen. Now, I submit to you, I submit to you that there is somebody that can handle your matter. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. See, now watch this. Watch this. Some people will look at me and, and think that just because I have a face of a 17-year-old, A face of a 17-year-old right there. I was talking to that camera right there. <laughs> yeah. That uh, I don't have wisdom. Far from the truth. <laughs> Look, I, I was, I was, uh, thank you, thank you. I, I, was told, I was told by some of my classmates <laughs> at, at school that, that, that you are an old man and a young body. See, wisdom doesn't have an age on it. Favor doesn't have an age on him. When God spoke to Solomon and said, Solomon, what is it that you want from me? Solomon was a young man. And Solomon tells God, all I want is for wisdom to lead your people. Young man, it didn't have an age on it. Oh, praise the Lord. Watch this. Watch this. First Timothy. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Oh, there it is right there. First Timothy chapter 4. Timothy had the, Paul had to instruct Timothy, his son in ministry, how to handle situations. And watch what he tells Timothy. First Timothy chapter 4, verse number 11. Look what he says. These things command and teach. Let no man 
despise thy youth. Be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity, till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Neglect not that gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy with the laying on of hands uh, of the presbytery. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them, that thy prophecy may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine, continue in them, for in doing so, in doing this, thou shalt be saved, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Wisdom don't have an age on it. God will take whomever is willing. Pour wisdom on them. Cause them to, to walk in the anointing of God to speak to his people. I'm telling you, I'm telling you right now. When it comes down to handling the matter, oh, look, I, I get right to the point. I, look, I don't be cutting, I don't cut no corners. I'm just straight to the point. When the Spirit of God will tell me what the problem is, I'm direct on it. Bam, I ain't, look, we ain't sugarcoating nothing. Here's what the Word of God says. Amen. Now, you're going to live by God's Word or not? Choose you this day. Yeah. Yeah. But some folks say, that's a hard saying, Pastor. See, because you know, you know what? Everybody won't. Everybody wants the mercy of God. Tell me about the mercy of God. Nobody wants to hear the judgment of God. See, there's a balance between mercy and judgment. And sometimes God has to judge the matter. Now, he will give you mercy if you repent. But if you continue to do what you've been doing, then God has to judge that matter. Man, as many times I've shared with people, I, I, I told them, I say, I, I told them, I say, now, now, now what I'm about to tell you is a hard matter. I prayed for your situation, and this is what the Lord told me to tell you, that if you don't get it right, you're going to die. <laughs> that, that, that's hard. But it's true. See, see, some folk are operating in so much sin that God has given them opportunity after opportunity after opportunity to get it right. But if they keep on choosing to do it wrong, God, look what God will do. He'll pull a hedge of protection from around you. And he'll allow the devil to come and buffet you, buffet your body, the Bible says. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Y'all done got quiet on me, huh? Mm-hmm. But I got to take it to the church. I got to take it to the church. I got to take my matter to the church, not get up here and give a testimony, but take it to the church in private. Now, here's the thing. Gwen and I are available to you. I mean, uh, there used to be a time where I would only meet uh, during the nighttime, uh, uh, 6 o'clock, because we, we didn't have staff here, and I don't, I don't like uh, uh, the Bible says, flee the very presence of, 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 of evil. You know, you don't, you don't play with that. So that's why I never used to meet with women at all. Amen. Not that I was going to do anything wrong, but if, if they would go out and say, well, this is what he done, I, could, I, couldn't, I couldn't protect myself from that. So I said, look, I ain't meeting with nobody until Sister Gwen get off. Now, if you can't meet with me at 6 o'clock, we ain't going to talk. Amen. Yeah. And so at a time, man, that all, look, Six o'clock was my meeting night. Monday night, six o'clock, that's the time we were meeting. Well, now since we got staff up here, I can leave my door open. That's right. And, and somebody could look in my office and see I ain't touching you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What's that hall monitor? <laughs> yeah. Got somebody walking down the hall like, is there doing something over there? Nope. Amen. Amen. But, but, but we are here for you to help you. Amen. We're here to answer your questions that you have. Amen. Uh, and and, and, and I, I want everybody to understand that, that, that you can call pastor at any time. Amen. Now, if it's about your toe aching, wait till I come to, to the church on the next day. Amen. When I'm going home, I'm at home. 
Now, if somebody died in your family, call me. My number is available to anybody who calls me. People here at the church, they give me at 24 hours a day. Look, just call. I'll be there. You know, who was that Mike, Michael Jackson Sunday song? I'll be there. I'll be there. <laughs> I ain't going to sing it. I ain't going to sing it. All right. Okay. So confess and repent. Go to your brother alone. Focus on the facts was the third one. Take a witness, a spiritual witness, was number four. Take the matter to the church, not a public testimony, but to the pastor, the elders, or whatever, whatever the hierarchy is. And then the next thing that you must do, if you're going to handle the offense right, and you're going to handle it God's way, is to forgive. You got to forgive. I wish I had some time to deal with this one. I, 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 gotta, I get to come back next week. Because we're going to talk about forgiveness. And then we're going to talk about walking in the love of God. That, that's, that's, that's step number six and seven. Okay? Step six, when it comes down to how to handle my offense, is to forgive. Write that down. Okay? Number seven will be Walking in the love of God. How do I walk in the love of God after I've forgiven? Whew. That, see, because that's the ultimate goal. That, that's the ultimate goal right there is to, is to learn how to walk in the love of God. But, Pastor, you just don't understand. I've been hurt by this man. I'm damaged goods because of him. Pastor, you don't understand that when I was a kid, I was molested by an in-law. And you want me to forgive them? I was abandoned by my parents, left for dead, and you want me to forgive them? My husband not only broke my heart, but he beat me up at the same time. And you're asking me to forgive him? My wife, oh, she burned me third degree with grits. <laughs> and you want me to forgive her? What, 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 what do you mean? How do I get to a place in my heart where I walk in that type of love? Where I walk in that type of forgiveness? I'm telling you, by applying the blood of Jesus to your situation. Oh, God. Yeah. See, that blood, that blood, the blood covers the multitude of sin. See, that's how, that's how I begin to, you know, to get that thing out of my heart. Because it'll take root, man, and it'll eat you up all the days of your life. Amen. But we're going to talk about that next week. Amen. Praise the Lord. But I got to stop right now because guess what? I am out of time. Give God.